Today's video is sponsored by a good friend of the channel, Bootleg Greedo. Sharnid versus Aloro, Akirian Timna, and Zer. Uh, yeah, pretty good hand to start things off with, so we'll keep that. Drawing into Sword of the Animist on turn one, and then getting into Urborg, so that will allow us to play out the Labyrinth Raptor. So I think we're okay to do that here. This is non legendary, so don't mind getting that down before our commander. Bloodforged Battle Axe for the partner player. The blue players holding up mana, we draw into an Anger. So I think here we get down Timna the Weaver and we can draw a card by swinging in with the Raptor. And then we'll try and control the Aloro player's life total a little bit, swing the Raptor in over there. Triggering Timna the Weaver, we will pay a life and draw a card, gets us into the Generous Gift. And this time the partner player playing a Manascape Refractor. Is, uh, just holding up three blue mana, really struggling on the colours over there apparently. And then we draw into Valky, God of Lies, so the question is, can we get our commander through some counter magic here? I think I would rather just try and get down the anger, to be honest, because I do think that they're going to counter our commander, so get down the legendary land and play the anger. Not worthy of that. The Zerg player is holding up uh, priority there, but the Aloro player isn't, so it might be they don't have counters over there. Spread the damage around a bit this turn, I think, seeing as how we have Timna in play. In response, we see Dictate of Crufix come down, so we're all going to start drawing additional cards. Going down to 37, and cleared a decent number of cards off the top there, without getting into a land, so yeah, glad I did that really. Get rid of the Valky. The Zer player does have access to Black Mana thanks to our Urborg, so able to play Sanctum of Stonefangs. Missing a land drop, even with the additional card draw, unfortunately. Seeing a Mox Opal from the partner player now, and they do have Metal Craft online. So, uh, Leonin Shikari being played. And they will get a Scry, thanks to the Path of Ancestry. Then it's a Kiri Line Slinger coming down as a 4-3 with First Strike and Vigilance. Infiltration Lens after that puts them at 3 cards in hand. Enlightened Shooter at the end step. That will put an enchantment or an artifact on top of Aloro's library. Uh, Mana Crypt is what they are going to draw into this turn. Dropping a land and playing out the Mana Crypt puts them on 6 mana this turn. Alright, and you don't see that very often. Aloro, Ageless Ascetic being played. Hopefully we can get into a land here. After clearing those cards off the top, it is a Toxic Deluge, a good thing to have. We'll draw an additional card to the Dictate of Crufix as well. Okay, got all of our board wipes, so Wheel of Fortune's out of the question. I think we need to start concentrating on Sword of the Animist at this point then. We'll have to discard a card at the end of the turn, unfortunately. So let's go Timna being equipped so we can gain some more life. That does have life link, and it'll get a plus one plus one buff from the Animist. And we'll hold back the Anger as a blocker, I think. Players might not want swinging at us if we've got Anger being held up because it'll give all of our stuff haste when it's in the bin. Uh, Labyrinth Raptor has... Menace, so it can go straight through Aloro, and Timna can go in to the left at Zer. We'll still try to make a land here. Certainly make one from Sword of the Animist. Alright, and drawing two additional cards there, so do get to make a land. Yeah, shame we didn't draw that before. We could have had the Arcane Signet down. Gonna have to discard a couple of cards here. So let's get rid of Wheel of Fortune, and we'll get rid of the Toxic Delu, seeing as how we've got two other board wipes available to us. Both of which are one-sided in Urza's Ruinous Blast and the Ruinous Ultimatum. Mirror Hall Mimic coming down here. Copy of any creature on the battlefield. So it comes down as a copy of the Aloro. Timna the Weaver coming into play for the partner player as well. They will scry thanks to the Path of Ancestry again. Infiltration Lens being equipped to the Akiri. Which is currently a 5-3. And the Manascape Refractor has abilities of all lands on the battlefield so... They can animate that thanks to the Blink Moth Nexus. Turns into a 1 1 flyer, goes in at Aloro, and Akiri swinging in at the uh, Zer player, who does have some more black mana thanks to the Drowned Catacomb, just in case we lose our Urborg. Probably a good thing for them. They managed to hit two opponents there, so Timna allows them to put two life into it, and they go up to six cards in hand. Infiltration Lens being thrown onto the Timna after that. Aloro casting Amulet of Safekeeping, and sticking with 7 cards in hand, 4 mana held up, we draw into a land straight away is really good. And then another one, so hopefully we don't start getting flooded. 
Throw out the Scalding Tarn, which will tap for mana thanks to Urborg. We'll get down our Arcane Signet. Then we're going to have to put Sword of the Animist onto our Menace creature here. So put two mana into that and maybe just have to get Sharned into play here. Maybe get rid of some counter magic from Aloro. They are holding up priority there. So once again, swing in at Aloro with the Menace. That triggers Timner at the end of the turn because we managed to get through there. So say yes, lose a life and draw gets us into another legendary land. So uh, do we just get out Captain Lannery Storm maybe? Don't want to keep discarding cards if we don't have to, so maybe that's worth doing. Not sure we're going to be able to swing in with it, otherwise I would have played it before now. Yeah, we'll just play the Captain. We accelerated our mana quite nicely this turn, that was the main aim of the turn. Go Shintai of Hidden Cruelty this time, it's obviously a Shrine deck as we would have assumed previously. I think it might be time to try Ruinous Ultimatum next turn if the Aloro player doesn't hold up blue mana. And they're paying the mana into the Go Shintai, so they'll be able to destroy something, is it power? With toughness X or less. So pointing that at our Timna. So Timna the Weaver goes down on our side. Done plenty of work for us this game though, we've drawn a lot of cards off that. Mana Crypt for Akiri and Timna, followed by Nettle Seist. Then a Swiftfoot Boots, Hexproof and Haste onto something. The Germ Token is a 7-8, and their Commander an 8-3 at the moment. The Mana Scape Refractor, if it will expand. Yeah, that's become a 1-1 one, one Flyer, thanks to the Blink Moth. So swinging in at us with the Mana Scape Refractor, the Akiri goes in at Aloro. Probably a good idea to land Commander damage over there. Not worthy that they haven't put haste on the germ token, so the Timna swinging in towards us as well. Timna swinging in towards Aloro, the Leonin swinging in towards Aloro as well, so really wanting to draw cards apparently. They did swing in the Timna towards us first, I would have traded them the Anger for that, so Anger doing its job here, whilst we're not desperate for the haste. Embercleave coming into play during the blocking phase. So yeah, definitely want to see a Ruinous Ultimatum at this point. Might even be that the Aloro player doesn't counter it if we go for that. They may well counter the Embercleave. Embercleave allowed to hit play and it goes onto the now 9-3 Akiri Line Slinger. So they're going to take a lot of commander damage. Bumps it up to a 10-4 with Double Strike and Trample. Alright, and Aloro plummets down to 9 life and 20 commander damage off the Akiri. Timna obviously triggers there, they've got three cards in hand at the moment, takes them up to five. And then it is Curse of Opulence. Well, it says he targeted himself with the Curse of Opulence. Uh, you can't really rely on the Magic Online log for some reason. Wouldn't have thought he would enchant himself with that. Anyway, Aloro, putting one mana into Aloro, so that drains us all. Demonic Tutor from Aloro after that is at eight life. I think they took a Lightning Bolt from the Mana Crypt there. So, could see a board wipe here, might not have to go for the ultimatum after all. Well, looks like they're passing priority, they're going to let this colourless mana go to waste, so... Yeah, not sure what the plan is. They've got 10 cards in hand, so they do have to discard down to hand size. Discarding down to hand size, Ashiok, Untreat the Angels, and Flux Channeler. We draw into a non-legendary land, and another land, so... Yeah, in a bit of a predicament now. I'm not sure we'll land a Ruinous Ultimatum, especially after a Tutor. I would have thought a Tutor for a counter spell wouldn't have been the most intelligent idea. But they obviously don't fancy going for a board wipe. I think playing out God Eternal Oketra and holding up the Generous Gift is an okay plan here. Don't really want to go for my commander if we're just going to see a board wipe here at some point. Yeah, let's just go for the God Eternal Oketra. That means the Takanuma costs two mana for us to activate as well, so we can get the Timna back if we want to, or the Valky now that we've got plenty of mana, that might be an idea. Can also hold up the Generous Gift still, even after we do that, so yeah. Let's swing him. No good attacks for the Captain Lannery Storm to ramp with some treasures, so that can just be a chump blocker along with the Anger. We'll continue to make use of the Menace against the Loro. I'm wanting to keep Generous Gift held up because I'm not trusting the partner player all that much to concentrate a lot on Aloro. Might be that they start swinging in towards us next turn. And I want to be able to hurt them for doing that. 
Thanks to all the life gain over here, the Zer player is managing to stick at 36 life. They gain some life from the Sanctum there and then put a mana into the Aloro. So uh, yeah, Aloro over here is really teetering. Uh, only two life. Okay, and then they just decide to scoop. Excellent. The type of scoop that can change the course of a game. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, players are talking all kinds of mess in the chat as usual. Glad I held on to the Ruinous Ultimatum though, because if Aloro isn't going to make it through to the next turn, it makes it way less likely that it's going to get countered. They need some kind of indestructible to various protection, something like that. Throwing down Ink Moth Nexus. Becoming an Ink Moth Nexus this time. Uh, so yeah, it does have, it's got that much text on it. A flyer with Infect. And then the Ink Moth being activated as well. And they can likely put Nettle Seist on something here. That's probably what the aim is. This is exactly why I held up the Generous Gift. Going through to combat, they can do it at instant speed thanks to the Leonin Shikari. Alright, so they've got two Infectors. I think the only way of buffing it... This is plus one, plus one, so that doesn't particularly matter. Yeah, we just have to blow up the Nettle Seist, really. We'll force them to dump mana into it, though. Swords to Plowshares goes on to the uh, Germ Token, because uh, that, I assume, was swinging in at Aloro. So they're going to gain a bunch of life from that. All right, so it's Akiri swinging in at us. The Timna swings in at the Aloro player. And then we've got a couple of Ink Moths as well. Uh, this is an 11-4 with Double Strike and Trample. So the Aloro blocking the Timna. Infiltration Lens triggers there. They'll draw two cards. We'll have to block the Akiri as much as we can. So we're going to go 14 points of Commander damage here from the Akiri. Because I do want to try and keep Captain Lannery Storm in play. The mana might matter. So, yeah, we'll go like that. Infiltration Lens. Before they draw two cards, we'll, uh, I wanted them to sink mana into the Nettle size, But they've got plenty of mana anyway. So let's just go for the Generous Gift now before they draw into an answer for it. Bloodforged Battle Axe is being equipped onto the Akiri, which I didn't account for, so uh, that is 14, I think I said we were taking 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, maybe? Anyway, we successfully land the removal on the Nettle Scythe, so we're not going down to Infect. Now the problem is Akiri still has first strike damage that they can deal and that will make a copy of the Bloodforged Battle Axe, so we probably still lose here, don't we? Even if I'd thrown the Captain Lannery Storm in the way, because they can equip at instant speed between... Um, before the double strike happens. Okay, um, throwing the Ember Cleave onto the Timna, which hasn't dealt any damage yet, so giving that Trample to get rid of the Aloro player. Okay, and uh, then they scoop. I mean, Magic Online, right? I do, I do feel bad uploading these videos, honestly, but there's really nothing I could do about it. I'm not going to put days and days of my life into this because I don't have days and days to spare, obviously. I'm not doing this for a living. So apologies to you all for that. I think he could have had us there. I'll, I'll have to work it out, or some of you in the comments section can work it out. Um, we'll say yes to Alketra. That can go second from the top or third from the top, whichever it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he could have hit us with the commander with the first strike damage and then double strike damage would have gone through with another blade or uh, blood forge battle axe equipped. Might have had us there, I, I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, we'll see what goes on with the mana crypt from our opponent. They put mana into Aloro and do not lose to the mana crypt. Got a decent amount of mana so they might be able to gain a chunk of life but doubt it's going to be enough. Our opponent admirably playing it out. We can't go for the Takanumar anymore. Uh, maybe should have done that before the Oketra went down, but not particularly bothered about what happens here, to be honest. Game's a total sham. Well, we haven't made use of our commander yet, so why don't we get Shanid into play for the first time? We'll have haste, thanks to the anger. And let's see if they had counter magic this whole time. Yeah, they had an absorb, and they gained three life with that. Uh, so, I suppose the trick would have been to just swing in there. And we would have got them with Menace, potentially. Um, yeah, but assuming that they had that in hand and they didn't just draw into it now, 
uh, put our commander in the command zone. Yeah, maybe it's safe to assume that they would have countered the Ruinous Ultimatum. So uh, playing that against the partner player, as I thought we should have done during that last turn cycle, because I thought we were going to lose to them. Sort of regretting not trying the Ruinous Ultimatum. Um, but yeah, it might have been that it got countered here anyway. Not sure if they drew into it just now or if they already had it in hand. Putting mana into the Aloro again. So let's throw down the Urborg. So we'll do what we were tending on doing the whole time. And we'll play the Ruinous Ultimatum now so that we can go wide on our opponent now that they're tapped out. And that successfully lands. No free counter magic or anything. So they've got seven cards in hand. But unless they've got a Slaughter Pact or something then should be able to get them here. Alright, there we go, and our opponent admirably plays it out. So, Mr. Mead, 93, big thank you. Uh, it's not worthy. Red Baron is the partner player that scooped on us there. Jokester um, was mana screwed, so you can forgive him for that. Was stuck on pretty much mono blue mana the whole time, and our Urborg helped him play a little bit, but desperately needed white mana. Have no idea what went on with the partner player, though, if that was some kind of shame scoop from bragging about being able to win and then it turns out that he didn't account for any spot removal but maybe could have won anyway yeah not sure i need to check the tape on that one maybe some of you can do the maths for me in the comment section hopefully you all enjoyed it regardless even though it turned out to be a bit of a sham in the end i'm travel kai thank you for watching